Senator Rand Paul joins me now. Senator, thanks for jumping on the show with us tonight. Do you feel vindicated? Absolutely. Well, yeah, but it's not really about me. It's ultimately about the safety of the country and the world. You know, if five million people died from a virus that came out of a lab, wouldn't we want to know? Wouldn't we want to try to prevent this from happening again? You know, they've experimented with other viruses that are much more deadly. This, this virus has been very deadly, but it's got a 1% mortality. What if you had a virus that had a 15%? They're also experimenting with the MERS virus. This is a coronavirus from the early 2000s that had a 50% mortality. And here's what they say. They still to this day are trying to get around the truth. They say, well, it was unexpected that it gained function. Well, how do you know if it's unexpected or not? It's unknown. If you take a virus from a cave, you combine it with a virus that has a 50% mortality, it either is going to be more transmissible or less, but you don't know in advance whether it's going to be worse or better. So when it gains function, that is something that actually is expected. Some of these viruses are going to gain function, and then the possibility of leaking out, I think, is a horrific thing for mankind. But realize that Dr. Fauci's been steadfast in this. He said earlier, Early on, even back to 2012, that should a scientist catch one of these diseases and spread it as a pandemic, that the collective accumulation of science would be worth the deaths of the people who die. And that's the question right. people need to ask him, but nobody on the left will ask him, was it worth five million people dying? Do you think that moment, that clip that we played of that interaction, and you had numerous interactions with Dr. Fauci now, now with this information, do you think that was perjury. Was he lying to you under oath? Was he, is there anything for you to do now? Is there any accountability, Senator? It's not only me. Many, many scientists are coming forward who are experts in this area saying, yes, they've been funding gain of function. He's been parsing words. He's been sort of kind of going around the subject and he never fully explains why it's not gain of function. But I think his explanation is this. Oh, it was inadvertent. We didn't know they were going to gain function. Well, that's what a gain of function experiment is. You don't know when you combine two viruses if it'll be more deadly, but it might be. If you have half a brain, you know, if you combine two two viruses, it sure might be more deadly. So he knew it was a gain of function experiment. He just didn't know the result to the experiment. But if that's the definition he's going to use, we still have all this craziness. You know, they do this in our country. Right. We need to try to make sure, so far, no Democrat has been willing to listen to this. I've been asking for an investigation for months. No bipartisan committee has brought this up or, or decided to tackle this. But you know, we have scientists, Kevin Esfeld from MIT. He's one of the great technological discoverers of CRISPR and gene technology for disease. He's not a partisan. He wrote in the Washington Post a week ago that this is a civilization ending kind of research, that this research could right. release something that could destroy civilization. That's coming from a scientist. That should scare us all. You know, Senator, I know what you're saying, and we heard it at the time. He's playing semantic games with you. He's arguing with you about the definition of gain of function. He's weaseling out whether or not this satisfies, quite honestly, just his definition of gain of function. I'm sure there's going to be some semantic games about whether or not he knew EcoHealth Alliance had broken their grant with the NIH. I'm sure there are outs, but there needs to be some accountability for twofold, I think. And you laid out one of them, right? One is this gain of function research goes on. And the other is Dr. Fauci. Fauci's word is gospel. People don't question his word on a host of things. So I have to ask you one last time, is there anything you can do to force accountability? Well, we've referred him already to the Department of Justice, but this is a very partisan Department of Justice that's really, there's a, they have a big problem, you've heard, of domestic terrorism with moms at the uh, you know, school board meetings. So I think they're going to be spending time going after uh, you know, moms and parents complaining about what they're teaching at school, but I don't know if they have time to go after Dr. Fauci for lying. And no, he should be. He should be held accountable because what we have developed is a system of health care in our country where doctors are afraid to speak out because he'll cut off their research research funding, where doctors who have talked about innovative treatment uh, to try to help people survive COVID are being lectured and told, we'll take your license. Um, you know, this is the kind of thing, this top-down centralization of medical authority that's not good for the country. It's also not good for innovation, because in a crisis like this, a doctor will stumble upon something that really works, and we may well learn from that, but not if the doctor is told you'll be fired if, if you do anything outside the algorithm. Senator, if he won't be investigated and he won't be fired, should Dr. Anthony Fauci resign? 
Without question, and the biggest lack is for lack of judgment. He continues to think that we should fund research in China. As we speak, EcoHealth is still getting money for uh, research in Wuhan. There's a project from 2020 to 2025 that, to my knowledge, Anthony Fauci is still in favor of funding. He says that's where the bat viruses are. We got to go there without any kind of understanding or comprehension that perhaps the Chinese communist military or government isn't the same as dealing with a democratic government elsewhere in the world. He hasn't really realized that that might be a problem and they actually might have, uh, you know, not just unintentional problems, but actually might have intended or intend to create things that would be very damaging to the world. Right. All right. Senator Rand Paul, hopefully there is some place we can find accountability for these lies. Thanks for jumping on with us tonight and letting us know what you make of this new report. Thank you, Thank you Senator Paul.